New for 96. With your hosts, Kevin McCauley and Chris Wynn. It's a pretty monumental year. Oh my goodness. Well, you know what I would pick. I know. You, I already know what you're going to pick. The Seat Cordoba. Yep. <laughs> Cordoba. <laughs> <laughs> Sanyang Musa. Uh, did they have a Sanyang then? Yeah. Yeah. I don't think that's how you pronounce it. I think it's pronounced oh. Seat. It means hello. Yes. Oh, it does? <laughs> no. That's like the, the Arrested Development thing with Anyang. Oh. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Do you, you don't? No, it's been so long since I've watched oh. that show. I've lost like half of the jokes. The references don't make oh. sense anymore. I saw that they have a season five now, and I'm like, why? Oh, it's, it's still out. going, the new it's one? It's out. Wow. Like, it, like, I got a notification because every time you log into Netflix on a computer, it has yeah. to tell you, hey, here's some new shows that you might be interested in, only ones that we produced. Yep. Yep. Because we only recommend our own things. It's the only the recommendation system doesn't work anymore. Nope. Because they just force their own stuff. You better believe it. And there's not a way to say, no, I don't want this. I never want to see Trailer Park Boys <laughs> imagery in my life, and I can't convey that to Netflix. But the computer thinks this is what applies to your life. I mean, if it so... wasn't the demographic in my taste, yep. Yep. it's probably accurate. It but... makes sense. Um mm. The annoying thing is that Netflix now has like trailers on autoplay when you load the site yeah. or when you load it on, well, on your iPad you or whatever. you accidentally hover over something. Yeah, and it just starts playing. And it's like for years now, websites have been uh, – actually, no, it's gotten worse. Autoplay content is worse now. So I don't know what I'm talking about. Like this is the culmination now where you have no choice. Yes. Um so it's always a little frightening because especially if it's like a horror movie, it just starts playing. Uh, I don't know if I care for that. Actually, I like it's horror bad. movies, but... Um, Have you seen any good ones lately? No. I can't watch movies because I fall asleep immediately. <laughs> Kevin looks like a dad attempting to use an iPhone, which he has very little experience well, using. I- I prefer to take pictures of my iPad, and it's yeah. not by my side. <laughs> yes. Have you ever wondered that, like, when old people take out iPads in the middle of, like, a location, like, where did they store that iPad? In the fanny pack. In the fanny pack. The iPad Pro 12.7, like, sitting in their fanny pack. That's yes. a good crotch guard. <laughs> I mean, I guess. I dropped my iPad pro the other day and like the you should get a new one anyway i know well so i had bought i bought this one last year and it had the magic cover on it mm-hmm. and the magnet gave way like when i was trying to fold it on top of the table and it slipped it fell onto my slate floor and i saw a spark whoa and then i was like whoa okay i was almost certain that i had shattered it and it just dented the metal um it flattened the metal, and then I started smelling like smoke, like what you like flint. Um, really? When you uh, try to light a lighter and it doesn't mat a uh, light, and I couldn't tell what it was. I thought like the battery was on fire or something; it was going to explode. And then I looked on the floor, and there's like a scorch mark, like it when it had struck the floor, it it sparked. You know what? I wonder if there is like you know because. They use like very exotic aluminum where it's yeah. they formulate it to be just right. I wonder if there's a high content magnesium in it because uh, magnesium is like yeah. flammable. Yeah. Um. There's. I think there. I remember seeing a video of like a a BMW race car with magnesium wheels. And it, like wait. So the how wheel do they caught on fire. Make engines out of magnesium. Isn't I there like combustion happening they within don't. the block? I don't think they make engines out of magnesium. Do they? Yeah. The um, the engine in my E ninety three thirty I from years ago was a magnesium block. Really? Yeah. Hmm. And maybe it's just contact. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, that's why those five thirty Is needed those Nicosil. But that was because slaves. of Nicosil. <laughs> Fine. I, what are engine blocks made of, anyways? Who knows? Uh, we may never know. They, the science is out still. 
Yes. Anyways, um, I assume that we were started now. It's hard to say though. Um, hello, Kevin. Good morning. Amazing. It is nighttime, and <laughs> uh, that's the kind of predictability that the listeners. Tune I know. In for. Just use your imaginations. It's somewhere between night and morning. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and. While it is partially clear outside, it is also hazy because there is a large toxic plume <laughs> floating <laughs> over Houston currently. That's actually. pyroclastic flow from our uh, man-made volcanoes. Yeah, yeah. Out in the bay. Yep. There is. Uh, they say that the air is fine, uh, but I have put my recirculation mode on in the car, which surely will filter out all those toxins. Well, you normally wear a SARS mask outdoors anyway. Yeah, but that's for looks. It's for right. Fashion, so... <laughs> Um, well, welcome to another episode of New, New for 96. 96. Oh, we're dragging today. Uh, yeah, it's the chemicals in the air. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. Yep. Um, how are you doing? Uh, I think I answered this already. Did you? At the top, but... All right, uh, I don't care then. I'm okay. I'm okay. No, it's too late. Yeah. You've killed that. Mm-hmm. You've killed the rapport. Is that how you pronounce it? I'm going to... Rapport and repartee, I think, are different words, right? Yeah, because rapar, it sounds weird. Hmm. Yeah. Um, so we are about to go on the Hill Country Rally. Um, you're heading up tomorrow uh, yes. with your dad. Yes. To participate in the track day, which is cool. Yeah, it's going to be uh, Harris Hill Road, which mm-hmm. is a track I've... Driven a number of times, yep. and it is like my speed because it's not very fast, mm-hmm. and it's all very technical. And there's like long, uh, kind of what I would say like 180 degree corners or yep. close. So it's like you're you're turning. It's 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 a fun track. It's pretty bumpy, but that's yeah. why having a 40 year old car with 16 inch wheels is yeah. good in that case. But I I've driven it. I drove it in my Z a number of times. I drove yeah. it. I drove it in my Boxster. I drove it in uh, uh, Steph's 944 mm. Lemons car. So I've got some experience. Oh, I drove it in a Mazda 2 race car once. Oh, really? Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, I did a thing. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Like caged and everything. It was a blast. It was It was fun. Cool. Um, it was a... That'd be a cool car to... like. That seems like it'd be fun to thrash around in. Just like a slow car going yeah. fast. Yeah, and just keeping the speed up, and it's yeah. a really tight track. So you know, you're a lot of times you're at limit of grip more than waiting on power to come on. So it was cool, but it was uh, Steph. To make it short, Steph, there was a guy that Steph uh, prepared, or this guy prepared Steph's race car. He was kind of managed the team, and we had yeah. talked, and he had said like, "Hey, if you could do a story about my racing school, uh, I'll you know come out and." try some stuff, whatever. So we drove that and I was going to drive this spec racer Ford, which is like a little, it's like a little two liter prototype, yeah. but like kind of old school, but yeah. still, I mean, it would have been very fast if yeah. I'd been able to drive it and I drove it like a half a lap and then it had some failure and I had to get towed in. So oh, I didn't man. even get to like the throttle cut out and it just died on me and they couldn't get it going. So I didn't get to drive it at all, but it was, ah. it was uh close. I did have a harrowing experience where I was, I had the, like I was getting towed in. There's like mm. a big roll bar behind your head, and I've got this hook in the roll bar, and I'm yeah. kind of holding the guide rope to the ro- the tow yeah. line to yeah. guide it, which was sketchy. So that was the first out of two times that I was towed off of that track. Amazing. <laughs> was this where you went off track with your Z? Uh, this is where I went off track in the Boxster. Okay. And almost flipped it because I went sideways into solid, like complete mud. Oh my god. Like clay. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that was bad. Yeah. That was a day cut very, very short. Yeah. Did you mention that in the listing? No. When you I sold made, the car? I made an extra point to vacuum out the pieces of grass that were in the car that still. Like, were, yeah, I was about to say, yeah, you probably still coughing out mud from the wheel wells. Yeah. I uh, mean, the fun thing about uh, convertible is like mm-hmm. a time like that, like having the top down. Mm-hmm. On oh, well, track. going, yeah, no, that'd totally be cool. Like, it's just, it's it's nice for, like, visibility and yeah, everything. Yeah, for it's, sure. It's a cool experience. Plus, like, you couldn't do, that would be very difficult with the Boxster top up. What, True. With it having very poor visibility with it up. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't the worst. Actually, I think the 
that w- I think that's like a one advantage of plastic rear windows is yeah. that it can be bigger than glass because it doesn't I have to be. I can't recall the last time I looked out the rear of a plastic rear window, but isn't it distorted slightly? Well, mine was. Yeah, yeah. Hazed over, cataracted. Sure, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'm still kind of surprised that, do you think it's like an LCI thing where on BMWs, uh, for every generation, like at least the last four generations, they start with halogen rear taillights and then every LCI, it moves to LEDs and then it's back to halogens and then to LEDs. So like convertible tops, like I feel like glass windows aren't a hard thing to do and that cars had them in the past and then they're introduced with plastic windows and then it's back to glass. I don't think it's, I don't think it's gone back and forth. No, I really don't. Okay. Well then why not start with like glass? Like I feel like they didn't make some sort of like crazy, like, Oh, we've improved folding technology. And so I now mean, we can put glass did. in there. I think they did. Really? I mean, the first, the first top on the Boxster was developed in like 96. Yeah. So it really wasn't, that weird to have plastic. Uh, Maybe. And they didn't change it to like O2 and then it stayed glass yeah. for the rest of the time. The My favorite is the Ferrari F430. Yeah. Had had plastic. Yep. This is a car introduced in like 2006. Yep. Yep. And it had plastic and Ferrari claimed it was for to keep the center of gravity low. Because it was lighter than glass. It was pre-LCI. Isn't that amazing? That is amazing. They, well, they only did, it, it stayed yeah. until they did the 458, which is a full generation change. LCI. <laughs> exactly. It, Viper Viper LCI. Yeah. Yeah. Um, fine. Uh, at some point, I, I'm trying to remember if the... I am like subtly into the E36 M3 Cabriolet. Mm-hmm. Uh right now and i don't recall if they have they have a pretty big rear window yeah uh, but i don't remember if it's glass or i think it's plastic i think plastic. it's big because it's plastic yeah that's probably true i i remember the one in the saab the saab 900 uh was tiny it looked like one of those 1920s cars a little tiny <laughs> oval window which is such a funny like decision like the car probably has horrible visibility uh to begin with but stylistically they just can put these two portholes in the back uh, mm-hmm. And that's all you have. And then it came back in the seventies with the little bubble windows in the vans, didn't they? I have no idea what you're talking Fine. about. Fine, whatever. Um, so um, the Hill Country Rally, also by the way, we should explain, uh, is a rally in the Texas Hill Country, which is two miles uh, west of Austin, where we have elevation. <laughs> uh, so and this, and this is it, it's. Based in Kerrville, yeah, which is like I think an hour or an hour and a half west of, of San Antonio, yep, in Austin, it's, yep. Uh, and you pretty much like hang out at like a hotel and go and drive during the day on like group drives, and then come back to the same place. So you're not moving, going to a destination. Yeah, like you're just you're kind just of returning out and to the back. same thing. Mm-hmm. But they they do like a cool like car show where they shut down uh, last few, two years. It was comfort, but this year mm-hmm. it's actually going to be Kerrville mm-hmm. where they shut down like the town square and it's just like lined with all the cars. Mm-hmm. And then you go out and like, you know, get yeah. a beverage and dinner yeah, and stuff like that. I think Haggerty is sponsoring the food. This It year, is. Yeah. Barbecue, which is cool. That is cool. Um, and it's an all Porsche, uh, it's all, all air cool torsion beam. Oh yeah, it, specifically so it is pre eighty nine. Pre eighty nine, so we have nine six four no deal. Yeah. Uh, so it's very specific, uh, which I think is cool. Like, but also at the same time, uh, I can see how some people would just view that as very boring. Um, but I think it's kind of interesting. Um, you'll kind of get to see. It's kind of I don't know. You're with people who are experiencing the same. Um, the same thing as you, I suppose, just, and there's different groups going through, uh, different routes, et cetera. Yeah. So you kind of get varying experiences. Um, although I would love to go on a rally at some point in time, uh, with different marks, just random marks, uh, as opposed to just a single one. But I think this will be fun and interesting. And I've always wanted to go and yeah. I've never been able to because none of my cars have qualified <laughs> until yeah. now. This is, this will be my third one. Yeah. Uh, and it's always fun. Good, 
good people yeah. and a uh, fun time yeah. and a lot of cool, nice cars. Yeah. yeah. That, I mean, the first year I went is when I came back and that's when I was like, I need to, because I'd been kind of, so when I bought my 1980 911 SC, it was like, it was not really a project. It became a project, but it was, you know, there was a lot of things I wanted to do to get it where I wanted it aesthetically mm-hmm. and mechanically. And, you know, it had a big like turbo tail and I was like, I just want it to be clean and simple and white. And once mm-hmm. I found like that, mar- the martini kit yep. and how it pretty much only works on a white car and I'm yeah. like, Oh, it'd be really cool to do that. Yeah. And I just, I wasn't really bold enough. And then I went to the Hill Country Rally the first year and I came back and I was like, I got to do this. Because yeah. there was just so many like bright and cool cars yeah. and just like amazing, like, you know, RSR replicas. And yeah. Just lots of cool colors and stuff. I was like, I need something that's going to stand out more. Yeah. I know it's like the, a bad reason to do something, but it's also kind of, nah. it also brought me to like, yeah. kind of go a little bit bolder sure. and happy I did. Yeah. I mean, that's just like, the, I don't think there's anything wrong with like kind of when it's just like a little detail so long as it's not like it because you can go so wrong with that so quickly like yeah. adding things to the car that weren't originally on the car uh and i can kind of understand especially if like you see a lot of those cars i mean uh you know it these are special but common cars like uh yeah. anywhere you look uh you'll see one um and i I kind of sense get that feeling a little bit to myself now, like just having had this one for a few months now. It, my color is a little bit difficult to do something to, uh, so I don't know that I ever will. At one point, I kind of wanted to dial it down so that it kind of faded into the background so I could just kind of like enjoy it uh, discreetly. But um, now I kind of wanted, uh, dare I say it, like now I kind of understand the uh, outlaw um motivation just mm-hmm. like you have this car and it's kind of special as it is stock if you get it as such but then you kind of want to tinker with it until and just kind of make it your own yeah um and so now i i understand that kind of that desire mm-hmm. um so i don't again i don't know that i'm going to do anything like that uh, to mine, but, um, I am on the lookout for ideas. So I think the, if you're thinking the Garfield suction cup on the wind and the window, the rear window, I'm already ahead of you. Okay. I stole the one out of your car when you parked it at my house the other day. (laughs) Brilliant. Yeah. Um, no, I think if you had like the gold, Gold Fuchs. Gold Fuchs would be cool. And a gold, cur- like a, like a, you know, if it was matched like a, like a, su- not subtle, but I mean a gold, like Carrera script. Yeah. Could be really cool. Yeah. Because you're, I usually don't like the impact, you know, like when you have the rubber strips on the side. Yep. And the, another stripe. Right. But I yeah. think it works because yours is so dark that this rubber strip kind of blends in. Like, on the right car, it could look yeah. good, and I'm completely wrong. I'm, like, the Carrera script, I think, looks good on cars occasionally. Um, so I might be kind of, like, uh, scarred a little bit, just visually. Like, it works on some cars, but I've seen so many people with, like, applied after-the-fact scripts. Like, that one that we saw that said Cabriolet. Yeah, but yours would be good. You would yeah. do it legit. Um. So, but I'm into the idea of gold fuchs. I, there was that one that I looked at. It was guards red with gold fuchs, uh, six and sevens and, mm-hmm. uh, or not six and seven, sevens and eights. Uh, and it looked really good. Yeah. Um, so that's a possibility. Uh, that would be a, uh, I don't know that I've seen a car locally with gold fuchs. Um, no, I don't think I have. Yeah. Uh, so we'll be in, Kerrville, Kerrville. Uh, I'm wondering if the weather will be nice. Texas has <laughs> weird weather. Yeah. Mood swing, very uh, moody weather. So I'm always colder than I should be. I'm cold right now, and it's probably 78 degrees. I just room. hope it's not too wet. Like last year, I feel like both mornings, it was just 
wet, like yeah. misty, drizzly for hours and yeah. hours and hours. And yeah. then it dries up and then you're kind of done and it sucks. Yeah, yeah. And your car's filthy, which yeah. is fine. But it's just like, you you know, you don't really want to push or go too fast when it's yeah, yeah. like that, those conditions. And yeah. in Texas, it's just invariably, it seems like in the spring, you wake up and it's like, oh, it's wet again. Yep. It has, but maybe I mean we've had so many wet days. I know we are still hours away, but from where we're are going, but like we've had such a wet spring. Like I think maybe maybe it's kind of blown over. Yeah, the wet the forecast looks pretty good. Like it says cloudy. It keeps changing, yeah. but now it's changing for the better. Yeah. So here's hoping. It uh. So otherwise, I will have to attempt to drive with rain boots, which <laughs> will give me the extra added height that I need to activate the the pedals the um this will be the first the longest i've driven in the car you so, haven't left houston yet not in that car uh so i'm kind of excited about that the i take a lot of short trips uh in that car uh so i'll you know i'll drive out somewhere but it'll still be basically in town uh and i've put it maybe 1500 miles in the last I don't know how long have I had it since November and this is March. So, and it like, sometimes I feel bad just taking it around short distances because it probably doesn't like just like mm-hmm. short trips anyways. And then not that it's boring. It's just now I, this is kind of what I've been waiting for to take it on a trip. Yeah. So very excited. And it'll be my first rally as well. So uh, you always sounded like you had fun. Yeah, going yeah. on these, so now it's my turn. We'll be staying at the Yo Ranch. Right. I could not have said that more like an out-of-touch dad. Yo Ranch. <laughs> so, cool. Yeah. Kerrville's own Shangri-La. Yeah, indeed. It has a pool. Should we get in the pool? Mm, probably not. Okay, but I get in fully cloaked, I'll have you know. <laughs> so, I I have one of those 1920s. Uh, one piece leisure swimsuits. Suits. Yeah, the swimsuits. I don't know if the men wore that. I think it was just the women. They'd wear like one piece swimsuits that went that all had the way. pant legs. Pant legs. Yeah. So modesty, a modesty G string. That's not quite the same. Right. Yeah. I like that oxymoron though. So <laughs> we'll go there. We'll have new for ninety six G strings <laughs> to really make it memorable. For all parties. So, cool. Uh, what's next? Um, oh, well, uh, our friend of the show, Ilya, he messaged. We, we exchanged some emails, and we were talking about Davy Jones. Because uh, he left us that hat at Radwood. Oh, yeah. And I had... A, so, he he seems to... I mean, he, he knew Davy jones uh still does and worked with him in the past yeah and davy jones was a indy car racer and mm-hmm. he won le mans with jaguar and he was really cool and i i think we mentioned on the last episode that uh i met him at a jaguar event yeah he was their lead driver but uh since i went karting last week with one of my old friends i wanted to relay this story there was this place that there was a place behind the Ferrari dealership back mm. in like 2002 in Houston called Davy Jones Cart Zone. Oh, whoa. And he, I mean, I guess he lent his name to it, but he mm. also kind of like popped in. I don't know how much involvement he had, but yeah. it was a go-kart place. It was indoor. It was yeah. super cool. Like there was always like a cool car on display Yeah. or, or multiple ones. Like sometimes within the cart track, like, Ooh. you know, inside the, you know, barriered off, mm-hmm. but there'd be like an F-355 challenge. Mm-hmm. I remember... And I remember, like, on this, they had a pedestal in the waiting area. And I mm-hmm. remember, like, a vintage, like, super old Jag kind Ooh, of, like, nice. mats that we saw, yeah. you know, a couple months ago. Yeah. But once there was a, a Porsche 935. And I remember seeing the, Whoa. I remember seeing it's, like, it's saying it has, like, I don't know, like, That's six, really cool. 600 or 800 horsepower. I'm like, what? The, like, how? I didn't you know? see one until I was well into adulthood. Yeah. And Ilya may or may not have had some involvement with that car because he i think he mentioned that uh he used to assist or was on a team or something uh involving a 935 and i could be very wrong though well he in the email he he said that he drove uh so 
the very first, I'm jumping ahead. I yeah. mentioned there was a 935 at Cart Zone, and mm. he was like, oh, you must be referring to this car. And I wasn't, because oh. the one I was referring to was a race car, and I think yeah. they rotated in several. But there was one car that was, the. it's famous. I made an emoji of it. It's the first, like, special wishes card. It was made for oh. Mansoor OJ. Oh. In, uh who was like a McLaren, like mm-hmm. tag and in early investor. Mm-hmm. Like I think he owned tag perhaps, but yeah. he had a spe- like a special order 935 streetcar in this like metallic dark red. Oh, nice. And Elias said that he drove that car. Okay. It was here in Houston. That's what he was. Okay. He had mentioned that I, I forgot the Which story so around it, but yeah, that is super cool. Yeah. Uh, and so it would go on. Also, uh, about the carding. So mm-hmm. this place, we loved it. We it had uh, the merchant. You know, it had like some of David's like racing uniforms, yeah, and overalls and stuff like that. It was it was so cool. But my favorite part was you went into this waiting room, or not, there was a changing room, and you would put on like over your clothes. They mm-hmm. had like they had all these like Sparco race suits, yeah, and you would pick out your size and you would put on this race suit and yeah. go drive carts. Oh, it that's cool. It was so cool for like getting into the immersion and everything. Yeah. And so uh, it was, you know, I mean, when we were 19 years old, it was like kind of expensive to yeah. do this every weekend. So it was like a nice treat. So yeah. we would come back and um, this was like around like when I was in college, like around like 2002, I think it kind of went downhill. Yeah. I think the ownership changed Yeah, and it got, worse and it was kind of a bummer like they stopped changing the tires on the carts so they just kind of you oh, it know. sounds dangerous <laughs> yeah so it was it was kind of a bummer yeah but uh the real worst part was that the racing suits became optional oh my god it was like i mean i guess you could wear the suits if you yeah, wanted if you to. want to <laughs> so me and my <laughs> dorky ass friends yeah we're like well, we're putting on the suits so, yeah so we come out of the changing room we, we line up to the grid yeah and there's like five other people wearing like shorts and stuff <laughs> and we we're wearing these suits and we were and like they were like fucking nerds we're like we better beat the crap out of them oh my god <laughs> or else we're gonna look really stupid. yes but we did thankfully oh my god yeah me and my friends are pretty quick that's cool i am terrible on a track uh, a go a karting track. I haven't we, gone in a very long time. We should go. We should go. I wish as a kid I had done that more, and I just didn't. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I could have been a race car driver now. I could have been in F1 because I'm lightweight. Mm-hmm. I'm small. Mm-hmm. It it's very cheap to build a car around me. Yeah. <laughs> Fewer materials. Doesn't even need a seat. No, not at all. Well, a booster seat maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, okay, well, that's cool. Well, let's go to, uh, let's There's go to a plenty track. of places. They're all, like, an hour away, but yeah. it'll be fine. What about that place where they have, uh, the ski bowl, uh, and it's, like, an arcade? I'm joking. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, so. S- still. Still. Far still, away. Still, yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking of bumper cars, but we can still race there. Yeah. No, yeah. it'll be, it'll be fun. Yeah. It's, it's fun. What I don't understand is... I mean, I guess if you're driving, like, a open Formula car, mm-hmm. I guess it is more relatable. But, like, it just seems like driving a car and driving uh, a go-kart just seems so different. Even a fast go-kart, yeah. even a track that's like a track, just yeah. scaled down. It always seems so different. And uh, it's, I would think it would be just more about, like, the seeing the concept of how someone perceives a track and how they perceive movement and momentum. Yeah. And that... I guess you obviously you have to scale that up the faster you go, but uh, I can kind of see how that translates a little bit uh, over time. But I mean, isn't that uh, how a lot of drivers get their start? Basically, it is. So, it is. That's why it's uh, something yeah. I wonder. But I mean, I guess when you go to faster and faster carts, and then I guess like it's about it's like junior open wheel. Cars. Yeah, it's like it's vision. It's just it's one of those like I mean, it's just like anything involving sports it's not there's not like a one-to-one uh there's not like a one-to-one thing that makes sense it's this like hawkeye vision the ability to just see beyond like what normal people can see uh so i don't know yeah but let's go carding Mm -hmm. okay um there was a a, just the last thing about that there's still i mean i still don't really quite know how mm-hmm. 
because it, it, it's just like the physics of a cart are so different from a car. Yeah. But um, there was a, you know, the, like, there's a guy that's like a, he started, I think, he, I think he's a developer, but he's very, he's famous, named like uh, David Heinemecker Hansen. No. D-H-H. He invented like base camp, I think. Really? Yeah. Anyway, he races. Yeah. Like he's like got a bunch, a pile of money from yeah. his programming and stuff. Yep. And he wanted to become like his the, computers. Yeah, his computers. So he wanted to become like a very good racer. So I heard him on a podcast. Yeah. And he races like LMP2, which is like very, very, very fast cars mm-hmm. at Le Mans. Mm-hmm. And he talked about like how he gave someone a ride in like a, a GTR race car. Mm-hmm. And how, like, just the sensations just come at him slower. You know, yeah. He just processes things so much faster than a normal person. Yeah. Because he wasn't boasting. He was just explaining, like, with the experience, you just, you process things. It's so different, well, you that, know? To, so yeah. if you're in the passenger seat, it feels like, it feels so fast. And it feels like we're going out of control. And if you're the driver and you're used yeah. to that, it's like, this well, is... This is like 90%, you that's know? It. Yeah, and that's kind of it, right? Like, it's that vision. But it's also, I guess, maybe it's a, a connection to the machine that's just a little bit, I don't know. It, like, it's a little more telepathic almost. It's like when the F1 drivers would uh, appear on Top Gear and drive uh, the reasonably priced car. They were just immediately so much faster. Like, I mean, I'm sure there's much... The, the difference between even the cars they drive on a normal day would be so different from that car but they are able to like ring out times right but that's not because of a connection to the machine that's just because they can process what's going on at, well sure at way 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 faster well but react but it's also a connection to the machine in that like they've probably never driven that car before and mm-hmm. they can immediately feel how like what it can do doing like one or two test laps and then they can just ring it out better than mortals can so, uh but oh well yeah yeah so should I uh, glue a stopwatch to my dashboard for no reason at all? Yeah. A tag stopwatch. Yeah. Yeah. A Blake hoyer. would approve. A Hoyer. Yeah. Stopwatch. Tag came uh, after. Jesus. Okay. So there is a difference, Kevin. Yeah. Um, it's fine. Is it bad to put a Hoyer sticker like on my car? I... With a little Pegasus? Probably. Yeah. Uh, with a... Whatever else I can put on there. Baby on board. <laughs> <laughs> that refers to me, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so, I just want people to be aware as they're driving around <laughs> me. Ugh. See, now I feel a little stopped up because of the inside-out fog floating over Houston right now. It's terrible. It's no good. Yeah, it's no good. Dying. Yeah, even faster than normal. Yeah, I was trying to remember where that came from—the inside-out fog—and then I remember it was Treehouse of Horror. Treehouse of Horror. Yeah, at the end when they did um, uh, the, the gas <laughs> yeah. is seeping in, <laughs> and then they did a chorus line. Oh, I had a note about the uh, office space. Um, Oh yeah. Somehow, I think I think there was a tweet thing where I said, I said Bill Lumberg, yes, the antagonist, we'll say from yes. Office Space, yeah, the nineteen ninety seven film. Uh, I said Bill Lumberg would drive like a brand new F one fifty today. You did say that, and he probably. So you're you were commenting on how or why he would drive like a nine eleven in that movie. And I understand it's like a yuppie thing, but I mean, he could have had a 993. I don't think he's, it was a yuppie thing. I think it was trying to show how, uh, he wasn't as successful as he was projected to be or he, how he was projecting. We're back at that word again. Yeah. So it was aspirational because at that time, if you bought a car, like a, a 911 SC, it would have been viewed as you bought the old one, like, but like the old one that wasn't valuable. Because yeah. there were probably fifteen thousand dollar cars at that time. Probably. Yeah, and so if you, I mean, it'd be the equivalent of, you know, if you were just to boil it down to basic visuals of how people perceive things. If you bought like an old Boxster now, uh, good car, but people probably view that as oh, we just bought an aspirational car, as as opposed to like I always thought of it Porsche. as like a yuppie thing. I don't think so. I think there was a time. I mean. 
I think there was a time where they were just so cheap and that they were not viewed positively, at least to the general public's eye. So that was probably a strategic choice, like a character choice, that he bought an old one, or he had an old one, as opposed to, like, uh, it was, what, 99? 97. 97? So, because, yeah, so it just meant that he was just, like, that middle management type that wanted to be perceived as more successful than he actually was. So well, then today, he would have a... 72 month lease on a new F 150. Yeah. Limited. Maybe. No, I think he still would have had a Porsche. I think he would have had a Boxster. Mm. He probably would have had a. I remember there was actually a perfect uh, example of this. And it, it might have been kind of an homage a little bit, but do you ever watch uh, Workaholics? Yes, I did. So I don't remember. It was one or two seasons ago. I think it was Chris Hemsworth uh, did a cameo. Or not a cameo, I guess. Yeah, I guess a cameo. It's one. Is that a cameo when someone shows up once on a show? Guest um, starring? You're listening to Inside the Actor's Studio. Yes, I am James Lipton. <laughs> uh, it, okay, so he showed up. He he appeared in one episode. And he was supposed to be like this like big time boss uh, that came in from like the head office or whatever. And this was like maybe two or three years ago. So he showed up in a 996 cab with like a huge tail and chrome wheels. <laughs> and that was supposed to be like, I think it's the same thing. It was meant to be like this aspirational looking thing. Cause clearly it is a very bad Porsche. I don't know if like the general public would see it that way, but maybe it was just like a subtle nod. Like here's a very bad car that co- does not cost that much money. And someone in this middle middle management position who wants to kind of like show off more than he actually has, like would appear would present himself. So I don't know. I think that's that was a, a good, that's a good thing. analogy. He had suspenders. Yeah. And the, like, didn't he have like the Gordon Gecko collar? Like the, he did. Oh, contrasting he, collar. He had the two color. Yeah. The two color thing, which people still wear today. Really? Yeah. Uh, apologies to anyone listening who might still wear something like that. It is not to my preference, <laughs> but be happy. So, uh, what reminded you of this? Also, you say, you say that the F-150 is the middle manager's car of choice. Yes. Uh, or truck of choice, if you will. Car uh, of choice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess I could see that... It made sense when you tweeted that, but now it kind of doesn't to me. I don't know. Because it's like it's such an everyman car or truck where it's not I feel like when people talk about like middle management types, no no slight to people who are in middle management, but it's such but people use it in kind of a derogatory way, like you're just kind of stuck in this career limbo, and so I feel like people who are stuck in that career limbo buy cars that appear to be more expensive. So I would actually counter your F-150 with an Infiniti. Oh, maybe. Or an Acura. Maybe, but in Texas, there's like this machismo thing where a man Uh, needs a giant truck. Yeah, I want a truck. I want a Raptor. Okay, yeah, yeah, fine. But Uh, you're not going to get one. uh, I would have nowhere to park it. But a man, like a man, like it's like that's what drives this is like men need like a big truck. Like if it's not 20 feet long, like I'm not getting in it. I guess it's true. I I would say there are several people who I know who have trucks, and I'm not sure why they have trucks. I mean, I'm not saying this applies to everyone with a truck, yeah. but I think there's just a lot of people in Texas that have a truck, and it has to be a really large truck. I agree. Plus, trucks are now like, if you just want to burn money somehow, uh, buy a truck because you can buy a $60,000 truck, no prob. Yeah. Well, so. I mean, someone, someone said a couple of years ago to me that like, the reason, I mean, 10 or 15 years ago, someone would buy a Corvette. Maybe yeah. it's that aspirational thing of like, I need like a cool weekend car, like yeah. mid- midlife crisis thing. Like yeah. a Raptor is now that. Yeah. A Raptor. And this is not judged because there are people that use Raptors. Raptors are really sure. cool. But a Raptor is like the new Corvette in the sense of like this like midlife crisis, like fun toy that people admire. Yeah. Some people. Well, that's kind of always, that's kind of always been like, the brand new buyer of the Corvette crowd. Uh, right. Uh, yeah. Used Corvettes are fine. Uh, if, of specific eras. 
However, I don't know that I have met a brand new Corvette owner that I've enjoyed the company of, but I could be very <laughs> wrong, and I've just met the wrong people. So that is all. So, I yeah. know one person. He does not have a Corvette anymore. Okay. He bought it brand new? Yeah. Ooh, okay. He ordered, it was the Centennial Edition. Okay. C6. Um, wow, I hadn't realized that the Corvette had been around for 100 years. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. Yeah, and they're carrying on with that original suspension. Yep. The leaf springs. <laughs> yep. From that front and rear. Generation. Yeah. Um, I think it was 100 years of GM. Okay. But um, he ordered that. He had that for a few years. He used to be a track instructor, and mm-hmm. he, I th- he had a Corvette previous to that, but I don't remember. Yeah. Which one it was, or if he ordered that one new? Yeah. But I remember when he got this one. Yeah. Um, now he has like a CTS Sport. Okay. Anyway. Yeah, I wonder how I feel he feels about uh, GM trying to trick him into buying a CT5 because the five looks like an S. So, but it's a actually the same level of car. Yes. So don't know why they're going there with that, but sure. Five cylinders. Numbers. Yeah. What do they mean? Yeah. Five do liters. Do they mean things? Or like, uh, oh no, I, wait, I forget. Now they're, they're it, it's a uh, metric. Well, that's a supplemental number. It's yeah. It's going to be like well, 400 or whatever. It's a five litre yes. engine. Mm-hmm. Yep. So it makes sense. Uh, what is the, f- uh, the 400 is like a, what was the. Um, like Newton meter. Newton torque meter. Figure. Yeah. <laughs> We're always dishing out those Newton meters on yeah. this here is on it, New for 96. Is it that Newton meters is a higher numerical figure and that's why they are adding it? On, I Instead think of, so. say, pound feet torque? That's so crude. It is. It is. Pounds. I mean, yeah. on. Stone. We could change it to... This some, reference is Sir Isaac, Isaac Newton. Yeah. No. We're going metric with this uh, because it could be stone metric... Mm-hmm. Stone centimeter. Oh, yeah. It sounds like the car is lightweight if it's only like yeah. 240 stone. Yeah. That's I don't know good. what a stone is. So I think it's like 12 pounds. Yeah. Uh, really? I do think so. I, I, I just... I, I Okay. Real question. Is stone part of the metric system or is that just a colloquial I think I, I have no idea what any of... Great Britain uses, but it's all <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> like all of it. Yeah, because all the stones are the same size. They over still there, measure so really stuff by easy. hands, the horses. And... <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, the last British car I drove got uh, forty rods to the hogshead, so mm-hmm. that was pretty. That good, was best in class, I think. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Did you know that in your Prius, you can change it to? liters per kilometer oh why would i do that i don't know the number seems so much less impressive hmm. because the liters uh because you would get like i'm gonna make up a number here but like 10 liters to the kilometer what are the odds that's exactly what i get in miles per gallon amazing <laughs> Is there yes. something wrong with my this driving is so terrible we're just showing how unworldly we are right now Staggeringly so. Yeah, this is awful. Oh my goodness. Uh, so shall we move on to our segment? The are you the referring to segment? the fuke Mary kill segment? Yes, yes, I am. We need to have <laughs> like a, like intro music played badly oh, yeah. on like a worn out cassette tape. This is where we're gonna cut yeah. in the um, Springfield Ion Springfield. Theme. Yeah. <laughs> The part that Kevin was uh, just humming there was where, like, cartoon bosoms are, like, heaving into uh, the cartoon television. It's like you have a window into my mind. Yep. Definitely. Okay. So, let us pull up our list here of cars new for 93. 93? Okay. Uh, I, 93 was a good year. It was so good. Like, so many good cars came out, and so many cars whose names I don't recognize Mm -hmm. at all. Uh, Okay, Sue, why don't you go first? No, why don't you go first? Wait, no, I will go first. No, because, yeah, you want to go first, because I know there's... I'm going to leave one car alone here, because I know this is the one that you're destined 
to marry. <laughs> so, uh, okay. How does this work again? It's been like five weeks. Uh, we're supposed to choose the ones for each other, but we can, we can also just, you know, we there are no official rules. I wrote it down. A lot of good cards here. I guess the fuke for me will be the Vector WX3. Ooh, so Fuke is drive once. Drive once, because Ooh, I bet yeah. you that'd be a horrible car to own. It'd be a horrible car to drive, but at least you could say you'd Yeah, it. yeah. I mean, come on. Like, how often can you say that you can, you've driven one? Uh, car that I... Hmm. I want to be boring with the, the Mary, because uh, I'll be more... Uh, I'll say... Mary, but with a, uh, so the 993 came out in 93, but it would have been a 94, or I guess in Europe. It's on the list. So you it's could, on the list, you but it. it would have been like, for the U.S. market, it didn't come out to 94. Yeah, but it's on the list. You it's on the it. list. So, but there's the GT2. The GT2 would be Which cool. I didn't know, but I, I picked that as a daily. Yeah, uh, that would be cool but, as fuck. So that's interesting that, yeah, so 93, so they came out, it, I guess it would have come out in Europe in 93, well, so but here's also the, the GT2 came out Here's 93? the thing. Back then, it was actually a race car, and GT2 meant something. Oh, so it was one of those cooler. things where they had to get it in by a certain time, mm-hmm. and so the GT2 actually like raced at Le Mans. Oh. Um, Porsche didn't, they didn't race the 911 yeah. in... You know, they raced the 911 with the 934 and the 935, yeah. and then they didn't race the 911, like, in the 80s Yeah. Um, very much. Yeah. And then the 964, again, they brought it back up where they were racing the 964 is, like, mm-hmm. an RSR. And, yeah. the, and the GT2 was, like, the 993 that they yeah. raced at Le Mans in the GT2 class. So and then I'll have that it, all day long. That would be cool. It would be a horrible car to drive as a result of it being an actual race car, but I'm going to go with it. Yeah. So, uh, as far as kill goes, yes, I'm going to go for the three series compact. Whoa. Because that is not a good car. And it's cool. The idea of it is cool, but like the car itself is not, it's real drive. It's the hatchback with the E30 rear end. So it's a new generation but they put the old suspension in it. People seem to like the E30. People like the E30, but not in combination with the E36. The E30 is a bubble, though, <laughs> I feel like. Uh, it exists well in its own sort of stratosphere. But uh, So, yeah, that is my set. What about you, Kevin, as you frantically scroll the page looking for your cars? But I already know what you're going to M, so what will you F? Um, I could pick a Porsche or this roof BTR2, which is Ooh, very tantalizing. Oh, yeah. Uh, but I'm going to say the Lister Storm. Oh, my God. I don't even know what that it is. It was uh, a weird British supercar. Whoa. With like a crazy Jaguar looking. racing V12. Yeah. So like the Jaguar, or it, was it the V12? I think it was a V12. It says V12 right there. Um, yep. It was the, it was a weird car. Seven liter V12. Wow. Yeah. It was, it was from like their Le Mans car. Yeah. The, the Jaguar Le Mans car. Yeah. And so uh, I remember this from Gran Turismo. It'd be fun to drive it once. That'd be It'd cool. Be very cool. Yeah. Uh, I would marry the McLaren F1. Of course. Because... I knew that was going to be your choice. That is an open offer to any McLaren F1s. Yeah. That's I will marry any McLaren F1. I left that one alone. Um, and I would kill, uh, Ford Mustang, fourth generation. <laughs> At the SN95, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. so I did not hate that generation as much as so many people do. <laughs> Uh, I feel like not enough people hate them. No, they had some good ones. Like here, the SVT Cobra came I out. I was going to kill that too until I saw that I could kill the whole generation. Oh my God. That's not too bad. It's awful. It's not too bad. So It just looks so cheap. It just seems so like... I mean, they looked cheap for a long time. I know, but <laughs> until this was recently. like popular. They were all... Po- they're still popular. Oh, look at that red interior. My dad... And had a 1990 Taurus with the same red interior. No way. Remember that yeah. like, weird bent manual shifter? Yeah. That was... There were all, manual shifters back in the day, like, to accommodate for the low floor or whatever, 
always looked so strange, like when they had to have that like two foot stalk. Anyway, I, which like in our cars, there are these long stalks. Yeah, but at least it's at least it's straight up and down. Yeah, and uh, if you have a good boot, uh, yeah, it, that helps like tremendously. Instead of like a boot, oh my god, have you seen it like on trucks, where they have a boot, and especially on trucks because uh, I suppose the seat sits a little bit higher, and so you have to reach uh, the stalk has to reach a little bit further. They will have like a leather the the flesh bag mm-hmm. boot but it goes all the way up it's like a three foot flesh bag it's so <laughs> bad looking it's like you've just made it so much it might as well have just gone into a void in the floor with mm-hmm. no bag at all and that would look so much better yeah but you know aspirational boot bags <laughs> shift mm-hmm. bags all so right some other interesting cars there's a lot of good okay cars yeah let's let's read. just roll through the list real quick here uh okay do you know what an ac brooklyn's ace is uh, I didn't. I mean, I thought I did. No, dear. What the? Yeah, look oh at that. Oh my goodness. It doesn't look good, but you know, it has cool. It has cool names in its, uh, cool bits in its names. So it's a British. Oh, it's built to AC, of course. Yeah. Yeah, that's the company that made like the Shelby Cobra, yeah, the body, yeah. the car. Okay. Well, we don't have time to go into what it is, but look it up. It looks interesting. As Martin DB7 came DB7. out. DB7. That's a good. Uh, good that car. looks real good. Real yep. good car. There, yep. It's one of those things where I loved them when they were, you know, original. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when the DB9 came out, it had it, it kind of had everything that was good about the DB7, but yeah. with so much more poise. Yeah. Like, the DB7 kind of looks almost flabby, but now it's coming back, and the DB7 looks good, and this one looks good, because it's the Vantage. This is, yeah. like, in 2001. Yeah. This has, like, the V12, and it's got, like, the good integrated yeah. lights and the better wheels. Some of those ninety threes look pretty rough. Yeah. But um my old boss, my at the agency in New York, my boss had a DB seven Volante. Oh wow. Yeah, it's a okay. convertible. Nice. He was a big he was a big British car enthusiast. Um and he ordered an XF on the first day it went on sale. Really? Yeah. Dear Lord. Was wait, he owned the agency or he was Yeah. Okay. He did. Okay. Uh I thought he was a CD, and I was going to say, uh, yeah, where is that job, and may I have it? <laughs> um, okay, Aston Martin, Lagonda, Vignale. There is no picture. There's no picture, so I don't actually know what it is. However, it was designed by Moray Callum, um, Ian Callum's, <laughs> uh, make a horrible joke about um, this being the cousin of the man who designed, oh, it is. Oh, it really is. Yeah, okay. it is. Oh, I was making a joke that oh. <laughs> it was like his brother and it actually is. So Ian Callum has a brother who also designed a car called Oh the... my goodness. This looks. Oh, show it to me because it doesn't oh, have a picture in the goodness. listing. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Dear Lord. I've yeah. seen that picture before. And it is still frighteningly it terrible. It looks like a future S type. It looks like a future Infinity J thirty. No, oh it's, no, it's, it's very, so much worse. It's S type. Whoa, that's pretty bad. It has a like that wasp tail end. Yeah, that's not good. Ooh, but okay. I was criticizing the early DB sevens, yes. and I'm way off because look how cool these wheels that are. That looks so good. It's so good. That is a car that can do that design can do no wrong. Yeah, and to think that's stretched over an old Jaguar XJS. Yeah. Okay, Chrysler LHS. That's the wrong generation. That's the wrong generation. So the LHS would have been this one. The the int- original oh, Intrepid. I like oh, how wait, no, it's not the Intrepid. No, oh, no, 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 no. This no, that is a big the car. Evil vision. Uh, so I'm, I love on Wikipedia, they just choose the absolute worst example they can find. Well, I think it's like about the photo rights. Like uh, I think yeah. someone has to upload them. They can't just use like a manufacturer photo. Yeah. But like still like there are surely examples that look better than this. This looks like it is at a junkyard. Well, I think someone has to submit it. And uh, this I looks suppose. like it's at a community college. Maybe. That's where it is. Dear Lord. That, this in one Maryland. Is... Lance. Oh, it's in Lance. <laughs> Oh man! Look, I never actually noticed how badly designed this car was. There's a lot Look of at strength. this C pillar. Oh, wait, the C pillar is outrageous. Wow. Oh man, this was that's cartoonish. This, was this cab forward forward design? It was. Yeah. What? Okay. Every car was based off of the caravan. This is gonna be. This is. A, <laughs> this is a little divergent sidetrack. Yes. What is cab forward 
design. The cab bin okay. is forward of the trunk of the rear wheels. Ingenious. Yes. Okay. I always assumed that cab forward meant that it like the cabin touched. Okay, let's go ahead and be real stupid here. You have to guess too what you thought it was. I'm gonna guess uh-huh. that it was because cab forward meant that the cabin uh, was closer to the front wheels for yes. some reason. I have had it explained to me yes. as cab forward means it's like maximum greenhouse, like yes. this cab is shifted forward yeah and so it's like the engine compartment is as compact as possible so the greenhouse is as big as possible but i've also heard it explained to me where the cabin is designed first mm. and then the rest of the vehicle is designed mm. after that kind of makes sense but i don't know the truth and i've looked it up and i've read it and i've already forgot okay <laughs> that's um, amazing we may never know you think cars are still cab forward I don't know. I don't I see those on commercials anymore. Like cab forward, mm. the new CT5, 400 are still wideers. <laughs> yeah. Wider is still better. Wider, I, I, I was going to try to do that. What was the phrase? Do you remember? That was it. No, but the, uh, the, uh, the Hawaiian translation. We're talking about the Pontiac. Uh, <laughs> what was it? <sighs> it was the Grand Prix. Grand Prix. Wide track. Wide track. The GT. X or something, GTP. They, I never knew. So in the commercial, they stretched the picture. They did. For it was effect. like, but it like might also have it a boing. Oh, it shit. did. It, it did. Drink. Well, that's the end of this. But yeah, keep talking. I, never knew, I have to get a towel. I never knew this is gonna be a while. I never knew uh, if the picture. I never knew if the if the actual what the car looked like was before they stretched it or after. What's the deal with the Pontiac? <laughs> Grand Prix white track. It's hard to say. I think they had like, was it a cartoon? Was there a cartoon involved as well? Uh, there was. I believe Wiley Coyote was involved, but the car was film. Wait, it was film. Oh, you mean just like they filmed it with film? No, I mean the car was was video. The car was oh. picture. The car was photographic. That was it. Was, it was, the car was real. <laughs> oh God damn it. The car was real. Wiley Coyote was not actually there. Yeah. No coyotes were harmed in the making of the no, commercial. Not at all. I uh, was... Okay, I'm going to take us through. So there's a, another Chrysler I've never heard of, a Citroen I've never heard of, De Tomeso that looks pretty cool. Let's see here. Uh, the go- Oh. The Guara. The Guara. Guara? Yeah. It looks kind of like a Lotus Elan, like the front-wheel drive one, meets a Jaguar XJR15. Okay, then we've got the Fiat Coupe. That Those are cool. Those are cool. Here. Picture. Oh, yeah. Those are cool. Uh, we got the Fiat Punto. Um, or Falcon, which we didn't get here. Yeah. The EG, the erectile dysfunction, and the XG, the extra... Uh, Girth. Genital. <laughs> Extra yeah. girth. Uh, Holden Com- Commodore, Honda Passport. Honda Passports are okay. Is there a Commodore 112i? Com- I remember that Tadore. From... Common Tadore. I remember the Is there a from Need for Speed. Oh. Two units produced. Oh, amazing. Took them six years to do it. Kia Sportage. Always has a special mm. place in my heart. Yep. Lancia Delta. Oh, yeah, good car. Which one, though? Uh, let's see. Of that time... They probably all oh, it's had garbage. No. no, 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 no. Oh, yeah, no, that's bad. Second generation is garbage. Oh wow, how did that happen? The first gen looks kind of cool, and then the second gen went way downhill. Whoa, the Mahindra Armada. What Pretty is cool. The... It's like a, it's like a Jeep. Oh. It's based on a Jeep. Oh yeah, that is kind of cool. Looks like a yeah. It's like a Jeep pickup. Yeah. Forty years before we got it. Oh, this is kind of cool. The Mazda Lantis. Yes, it was related. I believe it was related. It was like a four door MX three. I was about to say it looks like an MX three. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. It uh, it did not. Oh, it had a two liter. It had a two liter uh, V six. Oh. Oh, was it three two three F? Okay. Interesting. Uh, the C class of the time that was good. That was the. That was a good C class. Yeah, good C class. Uh, Peugeot three oh six. Don't know anything about that. Nope. Proton. Wira, which has a cooler name than it's the actual car. Basically, a Lancer. <laughs> yep. From the era. The Renault Laguna, which 
I don't know what that actually looks like. Oh, no. Boring car. Rover 600. Guaranteed to be boring. Yeah, it sure is. Yep. <laughs> Seat Cordoba. Ooh. Uh, oh, it's trash. Yeah. The Sangyong Muso. Mm, a car. Kind of weird. Kind of cool. It kind of looks like a Ferrari 412 SUV. Which one? Look, the, 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 oh, it does. It look kinda, at that. It does look like that, actually. <laughs> They could have rebranded that a Ferrari. Yeah, that'll be Ferrari's they SUV. They could have had the first luxury SUV. Oh, no, I guess Land Rover would have had that title at the time. Uh, legacy. Oh, that's the good legacy. Oh, yeah, that's a good legacy. Suzuki Wagon R. That sounds it's fast. It's kind of cool. Oh, it's so QB. It's very cool. That's cool. Um, and the Volkswagen Passat B4. B4 the worst one. Bad. I'm going to... St- I'm going to go out there because I like the previous gen, which was the one without the grill. Grill. Yeah. That looked kind of cool. And the one after was certainly better than this one. Cool. That yeah. was Cars, new for 93. 1993. Yep. Uh, okay. So. I think that's a podcast. I think that is a podcast. Thank you for listening. Please like and subscribe. And we'll see you on the other side. Indeed. Goodbye.